This is Ben from Life in 360. Why does it always do that? This has been from Life in 360 and this is going to be one of my best videos ever because in this video I'm going to show you how to edit 360 videos completely for free regardless of whether you've got a Mac or a PC. There's an amazing software I use and it's called DaVinci Resolve. Hey, just a heads up, this is a free section I'm giving you from my video course, A Beginner's Guide to 360 Video, because I love you guys. I want those of you out there who can't afford Adobe Premiere or Final Cut to have some way of editing your 360 video. So if you like this video and wanna learn more, then check out my video course. So DaVinci Resolve is a software that I used back in film school eight years ago when I was shooting on the Red One camera Camera, which is a massive big cinema camera and back then it was only a color grading software and I got really good at it I practiced every day and my footage looked incredible and over the years they slowly started adapting this to become an editing software it's made by the company Blackmagic who offer their own series of cameras but this software is free there is a pro version but you don't need it it's really only for professionals working in Hollywood you can use this to edit your 360 videos from beginning to end over the years I also use this professionally as well when I was working as a videographer here in Sydney, I cut several thousand dollar videos using this software. So this isn't no iMovie, this is professional video editing software. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first you'll need to go to Blackmagic's website. I'll link it down in the description and you'll find on their product page, you scroll right to the bottom and you'll see a free version and a paid version. You wanna go the free version. Next, choose your platform and it'll ask you to enter a few details just so you can register it. You won't have to pay, so don't worry about that. Now you hit that big old download button and we are good to go. So once you have DaVinci Resolve downloaded and installed, open her up and this is the first window you'll see where we're going to create our first project. So let's give it a name. Let's call it Ben's Big Day Out and hit create. So here we are, here's the software, and the first place you wanna go is down into the bottom right hand corner. We're going to set our project settings. It's important that this is the very first place you go because this is gonna create the settings for the entire project going forward and you can't change them later on. So make sure you do it to begin with. So in our master settings, we're going to choose our timeline resolution. At the moment, you can't go beyond 4K, so if you're shooting with 5K or 6K or 8K, you probably won't be able to reuse Resolve. They may update this in the future, but at the moment this software is best for 4K 360 cameras. So under Timeline Resolution, what we want to do is go Custom, and you want to type in the exact dimensions of your footage. I'm going to be using Insta360 One footage, where the dimensions are 3840 by 1920. And this is super important that you get that right because by default, it's going to choose a 16 by nine aspect ratio. If you choose 4K, it'll choose 3840 by 2160. Whereas we don't want that, we want 1920 because the 360 video aspect ratio is skinnier than traditional 16 by nine. Next, I'm gonna to change to 25 frames a second because that's what we do here in Australia. For America, you'll probably wanna go 30 frames a second. With the rest of these settings, you should be able to leave them as they are. Make sure your cache files location and gallery stills location are in a place that is safe, maybe somewhere on your hard drive. But once you set that up, you won't have to worry about it. Now we're going to hit save and we are ready to get started. So the first thing to point out are the tabs down the bottom. We have six of them here. We have media, edit, fusion, color, fair light, and deliver. I'll go through them one by one in this video. I won't go super in depth, but I just wanna give you a really basic understanding of what this software can do and then leave you to explore its true potential because this software does a lot of the things that Premiere and Final Cut can do. So if you get to know it really well, you'll be able to do really powerful things with your 360 videos and non 360 videos because this software is made for 16 by nine videos. So if you're a videographer or if you make conventional flat videos, this is gonna be an amazing software for you. So definitely take advantage of it. So with that said, let's get started. Firstly, you wanna to go to the media tab and this is where we import our footage to begin with. In the top left hand corner, you'll see we've got our hard drives here. We can navigate to our clips that way or you can just drag and drop them into this window here. So here we go, I've located the folder I'm after so I have three clips here shot with the Insta360 one that you want to drag down into the media pool, which means we're dragging them into this project. If you ever want to add clips later on, just come back to the media tab and add them this way. Next, we're going to move on to edit and you'll notice that this layout is pretty similar to Adobe Premiere. A lot of the buttons are in the same 
places and I found as a Premiere editor, it was really easy to pick up Resolve because the program looks pretty similar. Look, there will be lots of different things, but it's not hard to pick up if you have a basic understanding of non-linear editors. If you're starting as a complete beginner, it will take you some time and I would suggest you look up some more in-depth Resolve tutorials, but I'm going to show you the basics right now. So firstly, let's drag our three clips onto our timeline. And again, you'll see this timeline looks very similar to Premiere or Final Cut. We have our video on the top layer and audio on the bottom. To zoom in and out on the timeline, you wanna select this slider and there we go. I like keeping my timeline roughly so I can see everything. That's really good. And then if you want to go in for a really fine cut, you can zoom in really close. The window on the left is for viewing and changing parameters within one specific video. On the right, we have playback for our entire timeline. So if I hit the space bar, this is what we're going to use to preview our video throughout the entire edit. To make a cut in our clip, you want to choose the blade. And I want to cut this clip about there. So the bad bit at the start is will be deleted. And the way I do that is hitting the arrow, select, and then delete. You'll notice there's an icon that links selection. So this essentially links our audio to our video. So if we just wanna cut our video, we can unselect that. And then when we go to our blade, see how it's only going to cut the top layer, which is the video. When we select it again, there we go, it cuts both the audio and the video. Of course, your best friend is going to be Command Z, which is undo. I'm going to undo all of those very silly cuts. So now I'm going to trim the top and tail of these three clips so it gets to the good bits straight away. Something that's really cool is if you just hover over the clip in the timeline, it will play it back in the viewer up the top right without you having to hit play. So if you want to scrub through it really quick, you can do that. So I've got a cool shot of me on a boat and I want to make a cut just as I've set the camera about there. So I don't actually have to play it back to see where to cut. That's really handy. So now I'm gonna hit the blade and cut. And I'm gonna delete these two clips. Now to get rid of this gap I've just created, you wanna choose the cursor and we just simply select it and hit delete. All right, that's looking good. On a side note, coming from Adobe Premiere, I've noticed a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are the same, which means I'm editing almost as fast as I was in Premiere in DaVinci Resolve. So now that I have a basic edit of these three clips, I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's move on to the Fusion tab. And no, this isn't to do with the GoPro Fusion. This is our Effects tab. So if you want to add text, animations, graphics, if we want to add a blur, anything like that, you'll find that in the Fusion tab. I won't go too in depth in this video. I just want to keep this one super basic, but here you'll find all of our various effects. If you just hover over, it'll tell you what each of them do. I'll just make a quick note that you'll need to go back to the edit tab to choose which clip you want to add effects to. So I want to add an effect to this first clip here. So I'm going to make sure the timeline is at the point of the clip I want to use. Now I'm going to go back to the Fusion tab and you'll see our clip is right there. So now I'm going to drag my text over to here. It's important that you make sure the text is connected between media in and media out. If it's not connected, it's not going to show up. So when I click on text one on the left hand side, I can now add in my message. So I want to say Ben's big day out. You can obviously change the font, color, size. If you want to change the text location, you want to choose merge just there. And now in the top right, we have parameters that will allow us to move the text around. I know this seems kind of complicated, but it actually gives you a lot of control over your graphics. I'm going to keep things really simple in this tutorial. So I'm just going to stick with my really simple text. On a side note, it's important to mention that these effects aren't yet adapted to 360, which means yes, they will show up in your 360 video. However, if you put them too close to the top or bottom, they're going to be warped. So if you add anything like text or photos, try to keep them in the middle third of your image. That way they'll look much more natural later on. If you go up to the top right, you'll see a button that says keyframes. If you click that, we can adjust how long this text Text shows up. So if we only want this to show up for say three seconds, we can adjust that here in the keyframes tab. So now we've edited, we've added some really basic graphics. The next tab is color, and this is DaVinci Resolve's famous color correction. 
This is basically the best color grading software available right now. I could make a tutorial that goes for 12 hours on this, but I'm not going to. So you wanna probably explore this yourself. There's heaps of tutorials on YouTube, but you can do amazing, amazing things with the color grading of DaVinci Resolve. Next, we have the Fairlight tab, and this is to do with audio, making last minute changes to your audio. If you recorded it cleanly, then you probably won't need to use this tab. And you can also do audio adjustments in the actual edit tab because you have the audio track down there and you can play with levels and whatnot right here in the edit tab. So the final tab to mention is deliver and this is where we're going to export our video. In the top left we have a whole bunch of options we can choose. It keeps it pretty simple and there are lots of cool presets here and just remember that we're working with 360 video so a lot of these presets aren't going to be optimized for 360 which is why we're going to export at custom and it still remembers we're editing in 360, 3840 by 1920, that's correct. Under your video codec, by default, it goes to Apple ProRes 422, but this is massive and it's just gonna make life really difficult. You don't need it for 360 video that you're uploading to YouTube or Facebook. So we're going to scroll down and search for H264 which is the codec I use for all of my 360 videos when uploading to YouTube. Also, before you export, you wanna make sure you go back to the edit tab and set in and out points. This essentially tells Resolve exactly where we wanna start and where we wanna end. So to set an in point, go to the start of your very first clip and press I. And likewise, for out point, go to the end of your last clip and press O. Now back to the deliver tab. So I'm going to choose a place to save this press OK. And once all of this is set up, you wanna press add to render queue. And the render queue is over here on the right hand side. So you could add several videos to this render queue and it would render them one at a time. And now we are good to go. Let's render this, which means export. So now I'm gonna to go to Insta360 Studio, which is my go-to 360 video viewing app. And we wanna just make sure that this is exported correctly and that it displays properly as a 360 video. All right, I've dragged it in and there is my beautiful face. Ben's big day out. And there we go. It's working as a 360 video, Woohoo! Now you can just go ahead and upload to YouTube, Facebook, or wherever else you wanna put your 360 video. So there is DaVinci Resolve. It's amazing software. I would suggest you spend time and just learn how it works because you'll be able to produce professional 360 videos quite quickly just as quickly as using Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro once you get the hang of it. So now that I've saved you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars from buying Premiere or Final Cut, you should definitely check out my video course. It's called A Beginner's Guide to 360 Video. It gives all my best information from years of practice and research in just a few hours. So I'll put a link to it down there in the description. Feel free to check it out. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already for more awesome 360 photo and video tutorials. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, so follow me there for more daily 360 content. All right, guys, until next time, be sure to capture your world in 360. You have no excuse now, now that the software is free just get out there shoot some awesome 360 video content and start editing because it's free all the links you need are down there and i will see you in the next video